What up YouTube, TK here, and today on the bench we have two talking calculators from China. Now me and Pitch Wizard actually first discovered these in Wuyashan when we were on China trip. It wasn't until we got to Beijing that we could actually find a couple to buy. What these are are actually calculators that read out the numbers as you press the buttons. Sounds stupid, but it's kind of fun. And in addition, they do a couple other cool things too. So today we have the Zhajing JX5281 and the Zhajing JX6622. They both got 12 digits, a big display, and seemingly all the same features anyway. The plan is we're gonna tear these down, have a look inside. May or may not be much to see, but we'll see how we go. And uh, have a bit of fun. Let's get into it. So I can almost guarantee this is the first calculator unboxing you've ever watched. So this is the JX5281. Quite a piece of work. Now a lot of electronics from China people will tell you is cheap and nasty, but this calculator actually feels really nice. It's got big buttons with a really positive click and just generally the plastic doesn't feel too cheap and nasty. It even comes with batteries. Now the batteries do feel cheap as all hell. They're really light, but they should be enough to get us going. So we'll go ahead and pop those in. It's actually a really seemingly decent quality calculator. So we've got it powered up and yes, it is just a calculator, but it does have some rudimentary time and also I think date functions. So we'll go ahead and clear the screen. I think that means clear in Chinese. You can already see how much fun this is. Then we got the numbers. Pretty cool. Incidentally, uh, four in Chinese is very unlucky because four su, sounds very similar to their word for death. Su. And yes, I know I'm getting all the tones wrong, so apologies to all the Mandarin speakers in the audience. I mean, straight away, this thing is just an electronic musician's dream. I mean, check this out. Where this gets really interesting, and it may take me a little while to figure out how to do this, there are, for some reason, I think there are alarm tones built in to the calculator, so you can set an alarm at a particular time, but it comes with a variety of different songs that it can play as an alarm. And this is where it gets really fun. Pitch Wizard played around with this on China Trip and it's what I'm gonna show you today. So we're now in clock mode and there is this AL01. This is alarm tone 01. As far as I found, there are 29 different alarm tones. Now you can access them with the numeral keys and then you can go up and down in banks of 10 with the divide and multiply symbol. And, you know, they're all pretty weird little Chinese ditties that I've never heard before. Now, if you pick the right combination of alarm tones, you can actually sort of play little sort of snippets of music on the calculator itself. You've probably seen Pitch Wizard do this in the China Trip videos, as we'll see here. So if we just muck around, we'll go into the, we'll go into the middle bank and we'll just... And what is cool is all these different calculators actually have different alarm tones programmed into them so you can have fun with them in various different ways depending on which calculators you have. I don't think any musicians are actually using these, but if you're an experimental electronic musician, like Pitch Wizard, like myself on a good day, you can have a lot of fun with these. Um, God knows what all this means. Now what is even more fun is when you switch it into this date mode here, you can actually play the calculator like a keyboard. So we actually have a full scale here pretty much we can play on the calculator. It is mapped a little weirdly as we can see. And then you just, just have the bonus there. But um, you can actually play stuff on the calculator, albeit with only, uh, what are we talking here? 10 or 11 notes. Now, it's not a proper 12 note chromatic scale, I think. I think they've missed a fair few tones, but uh, it's something you can muck around with and you can play a kind of passable form of canon. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a bit amusing. Uh, it's a long way from canon rock, of course, but you know, it is cool that somebody who clearly was bored of making just another rerun calculator actually decided to have a little fun at work and put together something that brings a little bit of joy into everybody's life. We'll go ahead and start disassembling it and see what we find inside. All right, we've got the screws out. I'm just wondering, do you think the owners of the Jin Tar factory are like super rich and have Ferraris? Because, I don't know, it'd be cool to meet them. 
Anyway, let's try and lever this puppy open, which is something you should never do with a real puppy. Okay, the case came apart with a bit of a snap. Hopefully we haven't completely destroyed it. Um, all right, very sparse interior. Not entirely unexpected. Just see if the thing still works. Yep, still appears to work. So it has been about 15 years since I disassembled a calculator last, but it really, it just is amazing when you really think about how we used to build stuff out of stone and now we can do this. So this is the main PCB. Under this black blob of epoxy, there'll be a silicon chip that's been glued to the board and it has bond wires that come out to all these traces that go to the screen, the buttons, um, you know, it's all it's all done in one chip these days. This here is a crystal, that'll be a 32.768 kilohertz crystal or something like that. It's a special kind of crystal called a clock crystal because the frequency divides very neatly down into one pulse a second in binary. So I was pretty impressed with the construction of this until I opened it up. The panel and the components are fine. The wires are soldered on, that's all good, but they've just taped some foam on here with a bit of masking tape and that's just, that's a bit amusing that they would do it like that. I guess that holds the uh, screen up against these posts. A bit disappointing that there isn't more to see in here. I was kind of perhaps foolishly hoping that there would be a main IC and then a separate sort of EEPROM or something that stored all the sound samples so I could get in there and replace those and turn this thing into a really cheap sort of sequencer or, you know, sampler, but Unfortunately, that was not to be. We'll just unscrew the keyboard and take a look at that. So if we just flip over and take a look at the keypad, it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect. It's a bunch of injection molded plastic buttons. And then you have this uh, rubber sheet. And what that has is these little buttons formed into it. And these black pads are carbon or some other conductive material. And when you press on that, it bridges the traces on the printed circuit board here and activates the button. Very simple, nothing special at all. So there's really not much to these calculators at all. And you know, it's kind of sad if you're probably, you know, if you're five, taking apart a calculator these days isn't very interesting. Taking apart a calculator in probably, you know, 1981 would have been much more interesting. There would have been lots of discrete components and you could have seen the little jobby that controlled the screen and the other little jobby that controlled the buttons and you know, there was probably another little jobby that did all the maths. Unfortunately, these days, it's... I mean, well, I say unfortunately. You know, the integration of circuitry is an amazing thing. It's just, you know, it's less interesting to look at when it's like, oh, yeah, here's the buttons, here's the screen, here's the calculator chip. You know, it's not as fun. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do indeed? The other calculator is also fun to play with. It sounds a little bit different because it's speakers mounted differently. Now this is interesting, we've got the other calculator here, the JX6622, again we're in this date mode and it actually has different tones, completely different tones on the keys. What is also interesting is its default date is 2005-0101, whereas on the other calculator it's 2006-0101. What that suggests to me is that this calculator and that calculator actually have different chips inside, and thus different tones. I actually think I like this calculator better, the JX6622, as to most calculator musicians, because, because it's got all this bling around the buttons, like look at that, it's all shiny, it's silver and chrome, and also, in this date mode, it actually has a much better selection of tones. How cool is that? And it has completely different songs on it as well. Today I'm going to show you how to do an audio out mod on these Xiaozhang calculators and this should work on pretty much any Chinese talking calculator because it's Chinese electronics, this is not the only one. You may have seen people do similar things with Game Boys, they go into the board and basically create an audio out socket because they want to record audio off their Game Boys at high quality. We're going to do the same thing here, it's not going to be high quality, it's going to be very simple. I just have to dig through my junk box and find some suitable connectors. So we can see this calculator has a slightly different layout to the other one. This one does have one big PCB with all the buttons on it. We have our calculator IC in the center here. We have our watch crystal or clock crystal over here. What we're interested in is the speaker. 
Now, what we're going to do today is we're just going to connect this speaker output instead to an audio out jack so you can hook it up to things like guitar pedals, multi effects units, or chuck it into your laptop. I'm going to be using a 6.5 millimeter jack. This is a stereo one, but the output is only in mono, so we're only going to use one channel. You could also use a 3.5 millimeter jack like this one if you want to use it with things like Korg Volkers or the Teenage Engineering Pocket Operator series. I'm not going to use one of these because my audio interface has a big fat 6.5 millimeter input, so I'm going to use this. I'm not going to lie, initially I kind of hoped I'd open this thing up and there'd be a really obvious EEPROM on the board that I could dump the sound data off. And then I'd replace it all with pig noises or drum pads and, you know, show you how to make a really cool sampler out of your calculator. I can't do that, but I can show you how to make an audio out mod for it. So step one is to just go ahead and solder some wires to the speaker pads on the PCB. You can leave the speaker in or remove it, it's up to you. I'll leave it in. Shouldn't cause too many problems. Kind of a messy job there, but it shouldn't matter too much. Then all you gotta do is take your connector, solder one of the speaker lines to the signal lead, which in this connector's case is this one here. And the other to the ground. It shouldn't really matter which way around you do it due to the magic of AC waveforms. Now, put it all back together and then plug it into your audio interface or your laptop or whatever you're gonna plug it into and you're good to go. What you may wanna do is, before you close it up, just melt a nick out of the side of the case and that will allow you to somewhat neatly pass your wires out the side. Go ahead and close up. It does snap together rather well, doesn't it? Batteries back in. And it's fucked. Wait it works! Okay, so this works. Uh, if you want to be stylish, you probably want to glue this on the side here somewhere. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hook this up to the laptop. Should be good. So I've gone and plugged things in here. We have the Jia Jing JX6622 calculator with the little mod plugged in to our Avid audio interface. Speaker still works and hopefully we can record it on Ableton. Now let's see if we can record. Alright, has it worked? Has it worked? Come on. Oh my god, it works. That is so cool. So yes, that is awesome. You can actually mod one of these Chinese talking calculators, turn it into a musical instrument, plug it into your laptop, record some dank tunes with it. I've modified both the calculators and they're both really cool. I think they're actually very similar, but they have slightly different chips. This one has a default date of 2005. This one has a default date of 2006. And they also have slightly different tones, but what's more than that, even though the basic audio for the numbers is clearly the same sample. The output circuitry between the two is clearly different and it sounds very different when you actually record it. So if I first show the audio from the 5281, then I show the audio from the 6622, so this one's actually, the 6622 is a lot clearer, but I actually kind of like some of the tones on the 5281 a little bit more. It sounds higher pitched or maybe just EQ slightly differently and, you know, it's like playing different guitars. You know, this one's a little deeper, this one's a little hotter, it's got more top end. It's kind of cool. I think I'm going to play with my new setup here. Till next time, thanks for watching. TK out. <laughs> I'm